Well, hello, friends. Welcome to the Ladybird browser update for November 2023. It's been another lovely month in the project, so let us talk about what's been going on. Um, so starting with the JavaScript JIT, which we introduced last month and showed some, um, you know, promising but not super impressive <laughs> performance progressions. Um, we've continued working on it this month, and we now have almost complete coverage. I think there is one bytecode instruction called schedule jump um, that we can't JIT compile yet, so we just have that one left. Um, so almost all programs are now able to run JIT compiled, which is great. Um, we've introduced support for floating point math. Uh, that was done by uh, Stefan and Simon, I think. And uh, we've got built-in support for math object functions, uh, also by Simon initially, uh, which allow us to avoid making an expensive function call when you're doing these um, very basic like primitive math object things, like getting the absolute value of an integer, stuff like that. Uh, we also have fast variable access, which um, tries to take advantage of static knowledge that we have about where a variable is in the um, AST scope chain. Uh, and we also have fast property access, where we try to uh, learn about um, object memory layouts and then remember things across multiple accesses. So a um, bunch of classic JavaScript engine optimizations have been falling into place in the last month, and it's been really, really nice to see. Uh, we've also done some uh, general optimizations, so not just for the JIT, but for the um, libjs engine um, proper. So bytecode interpreter or JIT, both of them um, get to enjoy uh, some new optimizations. Uh, in particular, we have fast, faster property access for uh, typed arrays with integer storage. So if you have like an int 80 array or, or one of those, um, then we now bypass a lot of the uh, ceremony and uh, checking and just do the minimal set of checks necessary before giving you access to the property, which saves a lot of time. Um, we also found a way to avoid creating the arguments object, which if you're familiar with JavaScript, you know that there is an arguments object that magically exists in functions, which contains all the arguments passed to that function. And we try our best to figure out uh, that the user doesn't actually want this object. Uh, turned out there was one more situation where um, we would unnecessarily create such objects, and we've now eliminated that as well, which allows us to allocate less create less of these things, saving, saving time. So uh, in terms of benchmarks, which we've been uh, tracking aggressively recently, um, you can see here we've made excellent progress on the Kraken benchmark, um, the bytecode interpreter, a little bit of a progression, uh, in particular, I think, from, from slimming down function calls. But the JIT has seen a massive progression from October to November, uh, almost 4x which uh, is fantastic. And it wasn't like one big change that was responsible for all of it. It was just like a constant uh, sequence of, of changes from many different people working on this. So it's been fantastic to see. Um, and um, if we look at Kraken, or no, uh, Octane, sorry. If you look at Octane, it is a similar story here. We have um, a Smaller progression. I mean, I shouldn't say smaller. Maybe it's <laughs> still more than more than two minutes faster on the bytecode interpreter. Um, but Octane is still quite slow, as you can see. Uh, we've gone from over ten minutes uh, in the bytecode interpreter down below five hundred seconds, which is pretty okay um, as far as improvements go. Uh, but with the JIT, we are almost at the three minute mark now. So we've come quite a long way from where the bytecode interpreter was in. Uh, October, and um, I've kind of made it my own personal uh, goal to see if we can get both of these benchmarks to finish in less than a minute together. So that I think that would be a really good target to to hit. Um, and of course, we need to shave off almost three minutes from Octane to to make that happen. Um, but. We're going to keep working on this, and there are still plenty of interesting performance opportunities. Um, but I think we're shifting focus a little bit to Octane and more complex benchmarks. Uh, both SunSpider uh, is way too simple. Kraken is starting to become simple for us to, to run. But uh, we got Octane, and then uh, we're eventually going to have to 
look at even more complicated benchmarks. But this is where we're at right now. I'm really happy with the progress and uh, we're gonna keep iterating, keep doing better. Big shout outs to everybody who's been working on the um, optimizations for the JIT this month. So uh, Simon, Stefan, um, Idan, uh, Big Pickle, and um, probably Sebastian, I think, and some more people, I, f I forget everybody, but um, if you worked on JS Performance this month, thank you so much. Uh, I'm super happy, super proud of the progress that we're making, and we just got to keep going, and uh, eventually we'll get to the point where you no longer notice that JavaScript is running, uh, which is the whole point of all this. <laughs> so uh, next thing is uh, GPU rendering, which we talked about briefly last month, where it was in its infancy. Uh, it now works on both Linux and Mac OS. It's not the default yet, uh, but uh, it is improving. So um, it's implemented using this display list or, or um, recorded paint commands that we talked about last month, where instead of painting the web page incrementally into a bitmap now, we just, um, while when we paint the page, we just record uh, what commands would take place. So like fill a rectangle here, put an image here, uh, rotate, uh, translate, all of these kind of transformations and things uh, are supposed to go into a command list that we can then replay either on the CPU or on the GPU, depending on which renderer you're using. And um, the coverage is increasing. So by coverage, I mean the number of uh, paint commands that we support in the GPU paint command executor. Um, but it's not on par with the CPU painter just yet. We've got um, a whole bunch of things left to do. Um, but we did see some optimizations also this month, like texture caching for immutable images, which uh, is particularly nice because that means that we don't have to keep re-uploading the textures between every repaint. Um, and Alex has been doing a lot of great work on this. So really, really happy with that. And um, I've actually invited my girlfriend <laughs> to show you uh, just how much faster it is. Hello, everyone. Hello, friends. I am Katalin, and this month I am here to do a little demo of Ladybird. So we're going to look at GPU rendering. This is something we started on last month and we continued making progress this month. There's still a lot of work to do before turning this on by default, but we can already show some nice performance improvements. So we're going to look at the stress test and compare performance with CPU versus GPU. So this is a web page with lots of gradients and transparency and images and such. First, we're looking at CPU rendering and I'm going to scroll. So we can see this is quite choppy when scrolling. The CPU is working super hard to render all the gradients and such. Then, let's try with GPU rendering. And I'm going to scroll, and the difference is obviously huge. Scrolling is much smoother and faster. It's very nice, actually. Basically, all this work was done by Alex. So thank you, Alex. And it was a really nice job. Now we're back to Andreas. All right. Thank you, Kati. Now, next, we're going to talk about web workers. So uh, Andrew has been working on um, process separation for web workers this month, which um, means that we're going to deviate a little bit from what other browser engines do. Um, other browsers tend to put web workers in threads and then share the same process. But we are uh, exploring um, process separation for these to, to try to um, uh, isolate them and see if we can get um, reasonable performance while separating workers completely. So we don't have to think about uh, having two JavaScript runtimes in the same process. And it, it simplifies a lot of things architecturally. And now is the time to try it. Like before we have web workers properly implemented, uh, if we want to do um, an architectural adventure here, like process separation, um, there's no better time than now. So, so we're going all in, trying it out. Um, and it's going to be exciting to see how that pans out. But uh, Andrew has been doing some uh, nice initial work on this. So we have basic post message between page and worker. Um, so you can talk to the worker in the other process. And uh, we just need to refine it, add more API support, and so on. Uh, but I think that's going to be really, I think that has the potential to be a really interesting innovation to try to just 
introduce more process separation in areas where even other browser engines don't do process separation yet. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about this, actually. Um, and we got to talk about stuff that we're adding to just the web support. So a bunch of new attributes or really old attributes, but we're supporting more of them. Um, as you can see here, just a, a random list of HTML and SVG attributes that we are now uh, supporting in our engine. And a whole bunch of people have added these. Um, I think MacDo, uh, Bastion, and uh, Implicit Field did a whole bunch of them. And possibly I missed some attributes here, but uh, it's it's really nice to see more of these old classic HTML attributes being supported, especially as somebody who grew up putting cell padding on my tables um, back in the 90s. So thanks, everybody, for continuing to improve our web compatibility, especially with older content. And also a grab bag of miscellaneous things. Um, we've seen initial support for the Clipboard API from Tim Flynn. This is really, really cool. It allows us to, or it allows web pages to interact with the system Clipboard in uh, in limited ways, uh, which obviously is a really nice thing. Uh, we've seen SVG mask type attribute support. Um, and we can now do scripts inside SVG, which is awesome. I think Shannon did that one. Um, and just like every month, we have a whole mix of various layout fixes. Um, we saw a bunch of grid fixes, some table fixes, um, possibly other absolute positioning fixes. Um, saw a bunch of CSS overflow, uh, overflow and overflow propagation fixes. So layout keeps improving. <laughs> We're moving forward. Uh, and one thing that's happening now also, which I'm a huge fan of, is that the inspector, like the DOM and accessibility CSS inspector that we have, uh, it's being rewritten as web content. So um, until now, it has been native UI. But uh, we keep adding more um, versions of the native UI. So um, if we have like a cute version of the native UI, and we have an app kit version of the native UI, we have an Android version of the native UI, we have a Serenity version of the native UI. Um, it's starting to become annoying to have to maintain all of these native inspector UIs. So uh, Tim Flynn has gone and just redone it in web content. So we can now do the inspector as a web view that just shows this. So we have the same code running on all um, platforms, which makes it much easier to work on, easier to iterate on. You don't have to update an increasing number of files whenever you want to um, add something to the inspector or fix something about it. So uh, really, really awesome effort by Tim here. Uh, there are some glitches with the inspector because uh, we're, we're stressing the web view in a way that we haven't before. So it'll be it'll be really healthy to to have to go and actually make the web view better at this. And I'm really looking forward to um, to seeing this thing improve, actually. So it's really kick ass. Thank you so much, Tim, for in initiating this work. Because, man, this is super cool, I think. <laughs> Anyways, that's a whole bunch of talking. Let's also do a demo. Let's start with my favorite website, which is, of course, twinings.co.uk, uh, where I like to order tea which is what I like to drink. So the Twinings website um, used to work just fine, but then they switched to a new system for this cookie consent pop-up stuff, and um, they broke our ability to load the site. And here, uh, it now actually finally works again, thanks to network exception implementing the missing parts of JavaScript modules. So we can load the page, and uh, we had a little bit of an issue here. I think these are supposed to be uh, rotated with CSS transforms, but we don't support rotations correctly yet. Uh, but other than that, the site does load. And um, one of these days, I'm going to um, live out the dream of buying my tea in Ladybird. Uh, I think it's not, not quite there yet. There are a couple of missing things, but we're getting closer. I'm definitely excited about that. And uh, then let me show you uh, github.com. So the github.com landing page, I don't normally see it because I'm logged into GitHub. So then I'd get this dashboard thing instead. But the landing page they have is this big complex page with tons of stuff on it. And 
we have gotten pretty good at, at um, the layout and rendering here, I think. Uh, there are performance issues, and we're not doing all the animations and CSS effects correctly yet, but we're getting better. Um, but one thing with this page is that it's just kind of undeniably sluggish. And I'm happy to say that uh, with the GPU rendering, pages like this one tend to get a lot better because um, we can just throw a whole lot of stuff at the GPU painter and it doesn't even break a sweat. So that is really nice. Um, just the ability to have fast and smooth scrolling. Uh, even though we're repainting everything, every frame here, uh, it still still feels nice and smooth, which is super cool. And uh, also the fact that CPU usage doesn't always spike at 100% from, from painting stuff is really, really cool. All right, and then let's visit uh, also on GitHub. Let's visit a profile page. We'll go to uh, Toby's page here. And uh, this month, we actually fixed the, uh, the green tile patterns, so the contribution graphs that they have. Uh, it was broken in Ladybird for a long time. It was squished together because of some layout problems with grid, as I recall. And this month, Alex tracked them down and fixed them, so now we are looking good, although we're not super fast on this page. I think there is some something happening in the background, some JavaScript or something. We need to look into what's going on with that. But um, it's uh, good to have at least things looking right. Uh, next, I wanted to show you slackware.com. So this is a page where um, it's very old school HTML. And uh, this is one of the pages that I know Implicit Field was using to um, drive a bunch of the table fixes he did this month, like table attributes and layouts and stuff. And it also gives me an opportunity to show you the new inspector here, which is web content. And um, wow, the <laughs> focus frame stays in place when I scroll. That's funny. Uh, yeah, so it has, a, it has some glitches, obviously. But it is really cool that we can implement this thing in web content and um, share the implementation between all the different platforms that we support. So really hyped about that. And um, what else did I want to show you? I wanted to show you uh, react.dev. Uh, it's another instance of a page that we're doing pretty good on. Uh, but scrolling uh, here feels definitely very sluggish. In fact, worse than GitHub. And it's one of the pages that we have been, again, targeting with the um, GPU painting implementation. So once it finishes loading, then it is much, much faster to scroll. And really, the hiccups come from uh, JavaScript or loads happening. So like reloading some image that comes into frame, and that ends up taking some of our time. But the painting code is getting so much better now that we're starting to offload to the GPU. And um, we're learning about GPU programming as we go here. So high chance that this stuff is not optimal by any means. In fact, there's a 100% chance that we can do much smarter stuff and much more sophisticated and get way better performance. Uh, we are just starting. Uh, so if anybody is interested in helping out with the GPU effort, uh, definitely, definitely come chat with us about that. Um, Alex has written almost all of the code so far. Uh, I just did the very initial bring up stuff. So um, come chat if you're interested in, in uh, GPU browser rendering stuff. Uh, and I think this is going to be really, really exciting to keep improving on this. And uh, apple.com is another page that also um, works really nicely with, um, with the GPU, I was going to say. And then <laughs> it doesn't load, but it does load. It does load. Um, and then, yeah, we have to wait for the images to load. That's an area where we, we're going to need to get smarter before we can stay smooth while things are loading. Of course, that is something we want to ultimately achieve. But right now, once, th once things are loaded in, it's nice and smooth. Um, so it isn't just, it isn't just uh, convoluted test pages with gradients, um, like uh, Kathy was showing you earlier, but also like real content is starting to feel faster. Uh, very, very nice. And then uh, final thing I want to show you is uh, something that has been annoying me is 
when you load a page that has this big CSS animation, you can see this thing is kind of struggling to scroll across the screen. And it's a little awkward. Um, now that we have the ability to run on the GPU, a lot of these big CSS animations just get a lot smoother for free. Uh, even though the engine code is really uh, inefficient when it comes to CSS animations, just by moving the painting code from G CPU to GPU, almost all animations immediately just feel better, even though uh, they're still inefficient and we can do a lot, even a lot more to make them even better. So um, yeah, I'm <laughs> really hyped about the GPU stuff. And uh, yeah. And that's everything that I had to show you today. So thank you so much for checking in and staying up to date with the Ladybird browser project. Um, if you would like to come chat, we are all on the Serenity OS Discord server as usual. So link to that in the video description. Thank you so much to everybody who supports the project, whether you're participating in programming or supporting us financially, uh, or if you're just telling people about this uh, ongoing stuff that we got here. Uh, Any way that you are engaged, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And thank you to my co-host, Kati. Uh, very nice to finally have a wife reveal. I know I said I would do a wife reveal at a million subscribers, but I, <laughs> I don't think we need to wait that long. Uh, and I will put a link to her music channel in the video description as well. Uh, anyways, thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Bye.